They all know my name. They all know my personal bests. You step out onto the track. Your adrenaline level clicks up to 12. Anywhere from 80 to 100,000 people. USA across your chest. Blood's boiling, you're ready to just kind of explode. It's really hard keeping that in the cage. And there's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to go. The decathlon is completely truthful in everything that it gives you back. There, there's a winner, there's a loser. It's cut and dry. You ran a, a certain time in a race down to the hundredth of a second. Everything's measured down to the centimeter. Everybody has their own lane. You know, the bar is the same height for everybody. It's the purest form of competition. It's the ultimate measuring stick for all around capability of, of the human body. There are moments within a decathlon where you're so incredibly mentally and physically exhausted that you, you can't put yourself in those positions in training. So for us, what we try to do is just mimic, you know, painful situations. We kind of, we call it kind of jumping off the cliff. The first run of a, of a workout, we set our body into extreme debt and put it, in, put it through a lot of pain. And that's when the workout starts. You know, the more cliffs we jump off of, the stronger we'll be. Standing med ball throws, overhead throws, V-sits, zoos. I'm in the weight room Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Power clean, hang clean, snatch, hang snatch, split snatch, 7.30 till 11.30. Rocket jumps, four max jumps, jump squats, quarter squats, deep squats, box squats. And then every single afternoon, out on the track, working on everything. Push up with claps, handstand push up, handstand walks. My caloric intake anywhere from 4,000 to 8,000 a day. Standing plank, incline push up, decline push up, rudiment. That's one week. We string together weeks and months of that. It's awful. <laughs> the number one thing is you just want to feel fresh. That's all you want. I know before I practice, a sugar-free Red Bull is in my bag waiting for me just to make sure that I'm, I'm up. The physical part of everything, that's easy. But without the mental part of it, you're nothing. You, you're jelly out there. In competitions, all the mental side is, is is preparation and confidence. You know, confidence is when you know you've done the work and you've, you've done it right and you have actual physical proof to kind of back that up. That's a tenth of all the crap that we... I, I have a piece of paper up at the track. I should have just brought it. And it's really small font and it's just... The decathlon is a, it's a long, long two days. The 100 meter dash. It's the first of 10 events, so you can't put it all in this one event, even though you really want to. The long jump, shot put, high jump. It's really just a biomechanical equation while maintaining horizontal velocity. Simple as it gets, speed, delicate power. The event to kind of close off the first day is the 400 meter dash. No matter who you are, around you know, 270 meters into a race, your body's starting to tell you to stop. Your body and your mind aren't really on the same page. Your body is wanting to go, and your mind's telling it to stop. Why am I doing this? All you're trying to do is finish the race and not kind of lose it. How am I going to be ready to, to compete and do this all over again tomorrow? Day two starts off with uh, the 110 meter hurdles. It's a mental effort to kind of trick yourself into believing that you're ready to go. You can actually feel yourself gaining on somebody or, and it's kind of hard on the second day to switch gears from this really explosive, powerful, calm down, slow down. I didn't know that I, I screamed so much as when well, I was the eighth event. If you mess up, you could, you could die. The javelin is about as primal as it gets. After the javelin, it's the final event of the decathlon. And by then, we, you kind of know where you're placed. You know who's in front of you, you know who's behind you. Um, and it's, it's the, it comes down to the 1500, the metric mile. No matter how great you feel, 100 meters or 150 meters or 200 meters into the race, your body kind of lets you know what you've been doing. The adrenaline 
that you, that you get at the start of the race is completely worn off. Your legs start to fill up with, with blood and acid. Relapse into the race, I'd cut off my foot if I could. Your whole body, your mind, your heart, everything's saying, stop it. And you've, got, you've still got 300 meters left, and by then it's just an all-out sprint. You have to spend you know, tens of thousands of repetitions and countless amounts of hours just for that one moment in a meet where you can completely clear your mind and just go for it. I've crossed the line. I've done exactly what I wanted to do, and it's really euphoric. To have everything kind of come full circle, everything that you've dreamt about and everything that you've worked towards has come to pass is hugely gratifying.